Hello and welcome to this short video about the Jaguar XK8 and its links to Japan. Ford Motor Company bought Jaguar in 1990 and they invested in the new XGS replacement, the X100. It was engineered and crafted in Coventry, but as with all Fords of the time, with the assistance of suppliers across the globe. In particular, it had very strong links with Japan and the Agihara Corporation. In the late 90s and 2000s, Agihara was proud to be the world's largest toolmaker, an international group of companies focused in Asia but spanning the globe. Its HQ was situated in the middle of Japan, northwest of Tokyo. It was one of the few companies that were able to make all the tools for a complete body shell in one place. Jaguar used the company on several models of the era, including the XK8. This was until Ford was sold. Ford sold Jaguar to Tata in 2008. Agiara was famous for making body sides. So for anybody who's not familiar what a body side is, it's actually the whole side of the vehicle, as you can see here. Now, on monocoque structures, i.e. vehicles without a, a, a chassis, the body side is, is a critical part of the structure. And it normally... Uh, includes what we call the rear fender and the the, the rail uh, the top rail or header rail and these are all skin surfaces so not only have you got quite a complex stamping you've also got high quality skin now Agihara had a lot of expertise in this uh, actually coming from Lapla in Germany the guys were trained were trained originally by the Lapla engineers now Within the Japanese factory, there is a, what they call a museum. It's a collection of body shells for all the vehicles they've worked on in the past. And there's lots of different models, including ones from Europe, Saab, and the like. One of the models in there is uh, should be familiar to all you, uh, anybody who's interested in cars. is actually an NXX. Now, this is a pre-1990s car, and it was all aluminium, so very much the height of Japanese tool making skill to be involved with this car and they made lots and lots of pair panels for it the hoods the skins the doors the roofs the fenders lots and lots of uh, tooling and lots and lots of expertise involved now also in the museum apologies for the quality of the photo there are two body shells that hopefully you'll recognize even though they're blurred there's an XK Coupe and Cabriolet. Now they're nestled behind other cars, uh, aside, alongside other cars, in, including the Mercedes ML, it's made in the US. And in the corner there, you can't quite see it, out of shot is uh, infamously the Rover SD1. I'm not sure if anybody's proud to be the tool maker for that car, but uh, Akihara was involved with that model. Now on the XK8, uh, the Japanese made this tooling for the outer panel, outer panels. So the roof, the bonnet, doors, wings, boot lid. The bonnet, as you can see, originally was made with no vents. It was actually uh, run like that for uh, 18 months before the uh, XKR came out, and uh, additional tooling was put in the, in there to put the vents in afterwards. Also in the museum is another familiar model, again apologies for the blur photograph, it's a, it's a Jaguar S-Type. Now, the Japanese made lots of tooling for this, they made doors and roofs and what they call a DOP, door opening panel, in uh, 2000. In 2002, the car had an uplift to strengthen for crash test, had new seals made out of dual phase material and high strength steels. That was the beginning of that sort of work with cars. And latterly in 2004, uh, the Japanese made a whole body side for that car. And I, surprisingly enough, the only reason for that body side that I could see was the actual deletion of this rim or this flange around the rear headlight. So Jaguar, all, all power to them, invest a lot of money to make a new body side just to get rid of that and improve the cosmetic look of the rear, rear of the vehicle. I think it looks better. Whether it actually was worth the cost is another, another thing. 
Ja uh, the Japanese were also involved in the X150. They made lots of panels for this car. In this case, not a lot of skins. They did make the windscreen surround, but lots of little aluminium uh, panels that go as part of the body shell. The Japanese were also involved in the XKF. Lots of panels on that car, in including the, uh, the bulkhead, uh, inner wheel wells, uh, sill reinforcements, and uh, isofix bracket, which is the thing here with the little hooks on. One of the proudest moments, I think, for the Jaguar guys, uh, sorry, for the Japanese, was the involvement of the Jaguar, what was the X1, uh, X351, the aluminium XJ, and the XJL. Now, here the team in Japan made the, the body sides and uh, rear fender, lots of other panels. A real challenge for those those guys in some uh, tough aluminium materials. Uh, at the time, simulation was just coming on, and the Japanese were trying to get their heads around it. Unfortunately, a little bit late. Uh, a sign of things going wrong actually was involvement in the Micro C plus C. So, <laughs> I think you all remember this car being on uh, Top Gear and being panned by Richard Hammond. He was driving around. Uh, villages with a paper bag on his head. Uh, Agihara and the Japanese were involved in the C plus C panels, basically the rear uh, the rear window panel, the boot lid, and uh, the sunroof for the top panel. Unfortunately, the car didn't sell, and it, it was a sign of problems. So, unfortunately, the, the, uh, the, it, it, uh, the Agihara toolmaking group failed. It was unable to embrace new simulation technology fast enough, and the global recession meant that Agiara Group collapsed and was put up for sale. It was bought by the Thai Summit Group in 2008, who valued their skill. Some factories were closed and other, others incorporated into the company. The core company still exists in Auto City Guma, and what was, what, what was one of the largest toolmakers in, in the world is now part of an even bigger group the Thai Summit Group. Alongside the Japanese, obviously Jaguar has gone from strength to strength, but unfortunately for us guys, it's lost its 2 plus 2 GT, the XK8. The Aguara team, I think all have fond memories of Jaguar and the X100 as being the first model car they worked on. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more XK videos.